Welcome to the Heart of Education podcast. Join Rock as your guide on his journey to reawaken the hearts of parents and children to the love of learning and to draw wisdom from within. In each episode, we will learn together from other revolutionary parents, teachers, and guides about their journey towards the heart of education. Come join the revolution for education. Hello and welcome to episode 6 of The Heart of Education. In this episode, I interview Harold Walters, a serial entrepreneur and a homeschool father, about his journey in education. All right, folks. Rock here on The Heart of Education. And we are here today with Harold Walters, who is a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I believe you were just recently featured on a QSR magazine. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's correct. Yeah. All right. Um, if you could just give a, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your uh, educational journey, Howard. Um, yeah. So basically, um, I'll start from, I guess, high school. I'm a high school dropout. So since we're talking about education, that's going to be fun. Um, you know, I, I did like six to eight years going back and forth in community college, thinking that was what I wanted to do with my life. And it wasn't really like... Um, what I found myself being passionate about. And then I had my first kid in um, 2016. And the moment we got pregnant uh, with her, me and my wife, um, I just realized that like, okay, this going to school thing isn't really going to, to work for me because I need to be able to support my child now. And I didn't want my wife to have to work. So I took the leap into um, entrepreneurship. And the way I started out was actually um, uh, selling uh, websites um, and digital marketing services to different local businesses. So um, doing that, that basically allowed me to um, generate enough income to not only allow my wife to work from home, but also to uh, just allow me to take care of my kid and be with my, with, uh, with my daughter whenever I wanted to. And it also taught me a lot of things about like selling and and put me in a place to where I was able to understand different businesses a lot easier. And so one of those uh, businesses that I created was a uh, e-commerce business. Um, and so that is where I got like my big launch into, uh, into business. Uh, I created a, a six figure e-commerce business within about less than uh, I would say 90 days. And uh, that was like the launching pad for me going into um basically restaurants, uh, consulting for seven figure, eight figure, nine figure retail brands and, um, consulting. So that's pretty much where I'm at now. Wow. Thank you. Um, on your journey, Harold, I was just curious. Um, so you see, you mentioned that you didn't really like high school. It sounded like, um, and you know, I'm, I am a public school teacher, but I'm also a homeschool advocate. Um, what are some things in your, in your experience, um, that you feel like, um, that, well, let's talk about the pros first, I guess, is, you know, what's something that you felt like the high, the school system did right by you? Um, and then, you know, we can go into like, why, why was, what was about the whole school system that you feel like you didn't really enjoy that you weren't, it sounded to me like you weren't motivated? Um, what did I enjoy or what did I not enjoy? Um, let's just start with what you might have enjoyed and then maybe okay. hop into, you know, things that like cause you to be like, and, you know. Yeah. Um, and we're talking about public school, right? I just want to. Correct. Say. Correct. Yeah. Cool, cool. So yeah, I actually, um, as a kid, um, most of my elementary um, school was in private school. So I went to private school like pretty much all the way up up until the fifth grade. And I had had like, I think I had maybe one year where I went to public school in that moment. And um, I don't know exactly what it was for me, but I just know that whenever I was in public school, I typically did not perform as well as when I was in, in private school. Um, and I think a lot of it for me was um, probably more of a, a social issue. Like, I think a lot of like my upbringing with my family and like, um, you know, having a, I was raised by my grandmother. I didn't have my parents in the household. Um, pretty much everyone I lived with in the household, at least like my uncles and my dad were all um, like, they either just graduated high school or they didn't graduate high school at all. And uh, but all of my, my grandmother and everyone and who, who raised me and 
her brothers or all her siblings and all that, they were all educated. And so I had a very mixed, like, you know, on one side, I see family that family that's able to make money and, and do things much, uh, at a high level without an education. And then I have another side of my family who does have an education and, um, you know, has the same outcome essentially, if not worse. And so I guess I would say, I wouldn't really say I took anything from school other than what not to do so much. Um, you know, like I remember literally having classes um, in the sixth grade where we would like our work was to literally just uh, copy pages in a, in a history book or copy pages in an English book. And it was just, it was just busy work. I didn't really learn anything from it. Um, but what I would say as far as the positives is being inside of an environment where it kind of mirrors life in a sense um, in the real world, as far as like the social, social goals, um, you know, there's certain, there's, all different types of people that you go to school with. Um, you know, there's a popular crowd, there's an unpopular crowd, there's people that are high performers, there's people that aren't. And so uh, I would say like going through that um, allowed me to become really diverse, but also allowed me to understand like how to survive out in the real world outside of, outside of school. But as far as educating myself, I can't say much outside of maybe a couple like solid uh, teachers in classes that I really liked, like, programming for instance right so you mentioned programming and um so mike i'm curious so do you feel like um when you were in that um in the in the education system you um was it the programming was it like just because it was a different thing from everyone else you've learned or is it because truly you feel like this is something that maybe you can use in your later in your life like you see you see like something practical relevant to it yeah um so before i was even took a programming class in high school, I had already started like doing programming on my own. So I had already started learning different programming languages, um, Visual Basic, C++, uh, C Sharp, things like that prior to me even um, like taking a programming class. And so when I was in high school, my first class I ever got like just placed into was like auto tech, you know, and then they did the little like, you know, every like year you do like a survey or whatever, you answer questions and whatnot. And then they kind of decide, you know, what elective you should maybe go into. And so I ended up taking web design um, the next, my second semester of my freshman year. And um, it was cool. And it was awesome to be in those classes because like I was already doing it on the outside and I wanted to, to uh, learn more. But what I found when I was in those classes, I wasn't really learning more. And I, and it, not necessarily I wasn't learning more. I wasn't learning more into into a place where I could apply it to what I wanted to apply it to. And so I always wanted to skip the line. I, I would say that's probably my issue with school is that I always wanted to skip the line. Like I always felt like there was a way to do something um, without necessarily having to learn these other little pieces, which may be called foundational. Um, so, yeah, but essentially, yes, it, the offering of those classes definitely um, you know, gave me something to look forward to. Okay. Um, so looking back at your, you know, your journey through education, or like, you know, through the school system, and now that you are an entrepreneur, and I believe you created courses, right? Mm -hmm. um, to educate people. Um, what do you feel like is like the gap between like, you know, like what we learn in what you learn in school, your experience, right? And now what you've created, right? And you're helping people, I believe, you know, with this e -com business correct like get, helping people to launch their own um why do you um what is what is the gap that you see between these two things um i think there's a, a huge lack of mindset teaching um in the school system mindset money um i mean yeah we teach economics but we don't really teach it in the sense of where it needs it's really valuable to that person um or at least in business so I would say like a, a huge emphasis on mindset, like changes everything. Um, and then also, um, I think a, a big gap is, is um, getting directly to the thing that has the most impact. So like, I think what happens is I see a lot of people like want to start businesses and a lot of them that want to start came from like heavy, um, you know, 
education, education, school system is very important, college, 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 which I'm not knocking any of that. Um, but what I've noticed is that when a lot of them get into business, like they have all of these different like blockers and like barriers in their head that have to do with like little things that aren't very important um, that we create to think like, you know, I have to file this paperwork, I have to have this license, I have to have this, this, that, and that. And, that. Um, and I feel like that gap can be filled by like, hey, here's the things that you can do to start generating income. Because once you start generating income, then you can actually start, um, you know, building the other foundational pieces into it. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Could you care to elaborate on that last part? It was very interesting to me. So what I heard you say was that um, a lot of people who, let's say, are business majors, right, they want to start a business, but they feel like they have to um, go in a certain order of things, right? Like get your LLC formed, get this license if you're a restaurant or whatever it is, you know, in whatever state yeah. you're in, and then you can start, you know, generating income, whatnot. So right. what was your, and I believe you've opened a restaurant. So could you kind of tell us, you know, what was sort of like that journey? You know what I mean? Like, what do you mean? And maybe we'll see what you mean by, um, like, let's just hit the ground running, you know, but what does that yeah. look like exactly? Could you elaborate that? Yeah, for sure. So like, for instance, when we started our first restaurant, it was me and, and three of my partners. Um, and when we, we came up with our concept for the restaurant, it was, we just met in a bar and we talked about, you know, um, Hey, what do we want to start? All right. Um, let's, uh, you know, we came up with an Hawaiian concept. We came up with a name right there while we were there. We weren't thinking at all about all the different steps that were going to be barriers for us to making this happen. And so we started like creating the menu. We started, um, we started, uh, you know, putting out, we put out literally that night, like we created an event. We were like, hey, we're going to do a launch party for this thing. So we created a design for the invite and we sent it out. And then we even got to a place where we were meeting with our broker and we were signing the lease for the place that was going to be built like a year and a half from uh, that date. And at that time, we um, we were signing the lease and then they were like, okay, well, we should file an LLC first. So it was like, okay, cool. So we'll file an LLC. And that was not even something we had to do. The, the broker actually did it for us. Um, and then we had to pay a deposit, which was like $24,000 to, to open up the shop. And we at no point did we even think about any of these things moving into it. So basically what I'm getting at is like, like we took all the steps without thinking about all the other things that needed to get done. We just thought about the core thing, which is we want to create a restaurant. So we need a menu. We need, we need a, you know, we need the logo. We need this, but we weren't thinking about, well, are we going to have the money? Are we going to have that? Are we going to have this? We just moved, you know? And I think a lot of times we don't teach just like, or I don't see a lot of teaching on just get to action and just keep moving um, on what you want to do. Right. It sounds like we're um, there's this um, gap between like, you know, the theoretical, right. And then the practical side of business of, you know, let's say business, you know, where, right. you know, I think business school teaches a lot of theory, a lot of like, you know, how to manage a business, right. Like, you know, right. accounting this and that, and all the different departments and structure. Um, but then not necessarily the execution part perhaps is what is being taught. Is that what I'm hearing? Exactly. It's like, it's like, for instance, like they don't, you don't learn anything about negotiating. Like you might learn like some little basic theories about negotiating, but it's like, there's a thousand different ways to make a deal happen. But instead, like we have it in our mind that like things have to be, there has to be a certain sheet of paper. It has to be signed a certain way. It has to be written a certain way. And if you don't do it right, you're going to get in trouble. And it's like, even if that's true, it's like there's so many businesses are started every day. Like someone has to like keep track of this stuff. At the end of the day, like, you know, the chances of anything being coming down on you really, really hard for missing one form that you didn't know about or something like that probably won't even matter until you're actually making money, like a lot of money, you know? So it's like at that point you can take care of it. So I, I think yeah, that, you hit the nail on the head. Like it's, it's, um, it's, there's just a, a lack of, here's the, the steps that you need to take to make this thing happen. Like if, if I was, if I was to go to like a business class, I took a business class in college and I remember like one, the professor didn't have any experience in business. So everything they were teaching was just from the textbook that they read. And it was no, like, there was no practical information. 
And then so you get in a place where now you have to sign a deal or something like that. You don't even know how to like communicate or you don't even know how to have just a regular conversation about it. You know, I've been in rooms with people that like are, you know, seven, eight, nine figure earners and they dress like me or they dress like they don't care about, you know, anything. And, but we have it in our heads that like, no, you have to have a suit and tie on and like, you know, but yeah, basically what you just said, is action over theory. Why do you feel like that, that is the case, you know, especially when you pointed out like your professor, right? It sounded like he was just reading off the textbook and just kind of regurg- almost like regurgitating information in front of you in the lecture hall. And I'm sure, you know, you, uh, if I heard that I, as a former college student, I could tell you, yeah, I would probably skip that lecture because it's in the textbook. Why bother going, wasting my right. time, basically, or just wait for the video recording to come out these days? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, but where do you feel like that gap is? Is like, why is there such a huge gap between like what we're teaching um in these sort of like institutions right because it sounds like what you're saying is like yeah it's like there's a gap between what we're teaching in institutions of of you know things that are supposed to be practical relevant like you, you you're a business major you should know how to you know file an llc and do all those basic things but it sounds like it didn't quite transit so where do you feel like like who dropped the ball basically in this case or or what dropped the ball yeah um I think there's two sides to the coin. So one, I mean, government moves slow pretty much in everything. It's always behind. Um, there's a lot of politics. There's a lot of like, you know, if I came up with this idea and brought it to the school board, it's not going to be something that, you know, is, is um, that transcends throughout this public school system immediately. It's going to take years. Um, I think the other side of it, though, is that it's true. Like, there's a lot of different ways to do things. So it's like, for instance, if like filing an LLC. And this is the type of stuff that you end up hearing that like makes everyone like, oh, I don't know what to do. But it's like with filing an LLC, it's like, it's gonna be different depending on what state you live in. It's gonna, should you even file one depending on what business that you're gonna start, things like that. So there's there's certain questions that necessarily can't be answered in that setting. So I understand why some some certain things don't, aren't taught because at the end of the day, who's gonna take responsibility for it? The school system is if you're teaching people how to do certain things like that and they're doing them wrong. So, I I mean, the only thing I could really say is like, I just think that government moves slow and it also gets set in its ways of like, this is how we've done things for so long. Um, I don't know. Like if if I'm giving my honest theory out, like I have like my honest opinion is that like, if you look back in history, it's like pretty much everyone was private school or homeschooled, you know, before the public school system, you know, came. And um, uh, what I'm getting at with that is that um, I feel like the public school system is like, just let's get people in and get them out, get them in, get them out, make sure they come to school, get them out. It's not necessarily about making them the best person possible. It's more about making them fit within the the, uh, criteria that they would like to see Americans live in, if that makes sense. Right, be like a law-abiding citizen, which, you know, is is fine. Right. Um, but it also feels like there's this gap of like, okay, I have a high school diploma. What does that mean? Right. Like, does that, like, I, can, I don't even know how to find my taxes most of the time. You know, right. I may have taken a class called economics to, you know, let's say get my high school degree, which I remember I had, I think you probably had it too also, probably. Yeah. Some kind of requirement. Um, but then, okay, great. I have economic. I have took a class in economics for a semester. Does that mean I don't have to file my taxes? Nope, not a clue, right. right? And are you know how do I go get a job? Uh, what does a resume look like? Right. I, I I tell you like honestly in all my education, I'm like I never had someone teach me how to do a resume. I actually had to like you know Google it and sort of like fi- even figure something as basic as that out myself. Yeah. Or just consult you know people who who've been working longer basically no absolutely same here like i i mean like i said i dropped out so like i didn't even take economics i didn't take government um but i can tell you right now i can probably tell you more or tell like the average high school graduate probably even someone that study economics more about economics or government than they would be able to um and that, and that's also like it's more holistic too because it's like i'm learning from different people like different writers in economics on both different on different sides and they're giving their types of, you know, their theories and ideas. So now I can actually have a moralistic view and I can actually, you know, 
um, compare and contrast as opposed to just, hey, this is what I learned. This is truth to me. And, you know, spitting it out there. No, absolutely. Because it's from your experience. You've actually lived through um, these things. Right. Um, do you feel like your so we're just transitioning a little bit. Do you feel like your experience with the public school education system kind of influenced you um, and your wife to kind of homeschool your kids? Uh, could you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, like I said, like, yeah, I grew up in private school, so I, I knew what it was. I knew the difference. And, and also, um, yeah, I'm homeschooling my, my uh, daughter right now, and I probably will um, up to kindergarten for all of my kids. But after that, I, I'm actually going to be putting Naomi in private school. And then maybe later on, I'll probably homeschool her again with like a private tutor or something like that's what I'm thinking. Um, but I do um, believe that like when they get to say their uh, freshman year and if they want to go to public school, I'd be open to it. Um, it. At the end of the day, I'm really just trying to create a foundation for them first and help them understand that like education is more than what they're going to get in school. Like I feel like school is more I'm just like I said, you're going through this because it's necessary. It's a requirement for you to be, you know, a normal citizen, essentially. If you don't, you're going to be looked at a certain way. And, and yeah, it also does affect certain opportunities, like to some extent. But um, yeah, so I would say that if, as far as how it influenced me, um, I just essentially want to have a lot of control of what they're learning right now and these early years where everything that they're learning is being just completely absorbed into them. I need to be able to give them, I need, we need to be able to control the narrative um, in that, in this time frame right now where it's so sensitive. Okay. I hear you. So you're just saying that, especially right now when, since they're so young, um, you want to make sure that whatever is they absorb in, or input to them is, is things you want them to kind of carry on in, in their life. So could you give us some examples of like, like some values perhaps that you're stealing in them or, um, you know, just some philosophies or mindsets. Cause you, you kept talking about like, you know, like mindset, right? Like a lot of business people don't have these mindsets um, that actually help them get to, you know, generating revenue and whatnot. So if you can just share a bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. I like to like one, like confidence, um, just building that up now. So that it's not like, Hey, I'm, I'm walking into this thing, not knowing that who I am, um, not saying that I'm going to be able to tell them who they are right now or get them to know that, but just understanding that like, Hey, you're able to be whoever you want to be and, and not get them already plugged into this huge amount of peer pressure in a sense. Um, the other thing too, is like just how I teach them about money. Like how we, we talk about like money's not something that's like a stigma to us. Like, or not a stigma, like, a uh, like it's not taboo. Like, you know, I know some houses where like, you just talk about money and it's like, you know, you don't ask people how much money they have. You don't talk about how much money you have. You, you know, you're, you're mindful of how you spend and how you budget. And I like to teach my kids that like, no, like there's an abundance of, of this. Like, this is not something that we need to um, struggle over. And even if we are struggling, I'm, I'm teaching them that like, no, like it's going to come, you know? And so I want to make sure they have these understanding before they get exposed to where they're around a bunch of other people that have been taught a certain way from their family and then they start sharing it with them and now they start thinking it's true because for whatever reason i think there's a lot of other things that go into it too like even the ages we put them in school like are they the oldest kid in the class or are they the youngest kid in the class because if they're the youngest kid in the class then they're going to take you know they might look at the older person and just take whatever they say and, and say that word is bond so um yeah i would say confidence money uh spirituality um and then just uh, like priorities, like understanding like what's important for them. Okay. Yeah. That sounds really good. I love that you're teaching your um, kids about like money. Cause you're right. Like a lot of people, you know, the most they hear about money is either money doesn't grow on trees when you ask for things. Right. Mm -hmm. Or like, what do you think? I made a money or something. And you know, those, those sayings have an impact on our children on how they view money. Um, right. And you know, we're not saying money is the most important thing, but, it is necessary. It is very helpful for life, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I'm glad to hear that. Um, so, as you know, um, uh, so a lot of my audiences, you know, like they're homeschooling or they're thinking about it, but you know, maybe their biggest hurdle, perhaps, is, hey, you gotta have one person at home, whether it's mom, dad, or whoever's. So that could mean a loss of an income. So you had mentioned that 
you know, you made the jump to entrepreneurship and that really helped you free up your time. Um, what are some practical, like, what are some practical things that, you know, you would tell any homeschool mom or parent out there that like, Hey, if you were to start something today, here's what I would do. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a few different things, but primarily like e-commerce is one that that was huge for me. Um, I think, I think one thing that I would say is the biggest to learn though, and I'll say this because this is what, like I said, was my, um, was my launching pad. And that was like web design. And so I knew how to do web design. I'm only, I'm saying web design because I want everyone to understand that if they have a service or they're an expert at something, or when I say expert, I mean that you can teach somebody how to do something. Um, that right there is the, like one of the most important qualities you can have. But the, import, the important quality that you need to have bef before that or along with it is the ability to sell. And so when I did web design, like, I had a really hard time finding clients. Even the clients I did find, I would maybe sell them a $300 package or something like that. And most, most times people wouldn't even agree to pay me for it. And so um, what ended up happening was I invested into a course and that course, I thought it was going to teach me how to be a better web designer. I thought it was going to teach me how to stand out as a web designer. I thought it was going to show me how to build this amazing portfolio and all this other stuff and teach me just how to be better. And when I got in the when I got in the course, it didn't teach me any of that. It actually taught me how to position myself, how to how to sell, how to uh, find the right clients to work with, um, and all of those things. And literally, without changing anything about my skill set, I was able to start charging five x the price, and people would pay for it, and they would still be happy. So, I would say my number one thing would be to first take inventory of what you have. So you're going to sell. I would say sell something online. That would be my first thing. Um, but what I would say is take inventory of what you already have, what you possess. Is it education? If you're a homeschooling parent and you're really good at it, maybe you should do education on how people could homeschool. Like, I'll be honest, we're not the best homeschoolers right now. Like, I, I just, I, I know that. And that's actually one of the reasons why I want to put my kids in private school too, because we're like, I'm a good teacher, but if you're giving me a curriculum, to teach that's like not really like the best for me you know so but i know there's a large audience of people that want to homeschool their kids especially right now that um especially you know with everything going on with covid with a lot of the political stuff happening right now there's there's a huge influx of people that want to homeschool their kids but they probably don't even know how and so take inventory what can you sell like as far as a service or education and whatnot and learn how to sell essentially um but other thing would be like i said e-commerce and so taking that information and then being able to um, know that you have something that you can sell and formulating it into a course or a membership or even a product and learning how to run advertisement social media and things like that to be able to sell it because it's a huge growing niche right now and there's a ton of people that are they're flocking online looking for information on how can they build a business or how can they, you know, whatever it is. Like, and that's one thing I actually wanted to mention when you were talking earlier um, about like how the homes, how the um, school system can improve. And I think something to consider is like when we were in school, there wasn't really a lot of like um, online information that you can access. Like that's why we had to have, use it. Even when we would do like essays and stuff, our references had to come out of an encyclopedia or like an improved source. There was never using Wikipedia. And even then Wikipedia didn't even have that much information or you, there was no YouTube. So nowadays it's like all of that information is available now. And that's where people are heading to, to get educated on things. And so, yeah, I would say e-commerce would be my number one um, focus. Okay. So I heard you saying that, you know, you got to think about like what skill you have and then how to package it, right? How to sell it. Um, and th so could you just tell us, uh, our audience about like what exactly is e-commerce and, you know, do I need a passion, um, or have like knowledge of something in order to, to do this? Like, what is it, what are the, you know, practical steps to get into e-commerce? Yeah. So, um, you know, it used to be really hard. Uh, like I had built my first e-commerce store when I was 15. And it used to be really, really hard. It was very expensive. But now, 
anyone can essentially start an e-commerce store. And, and to answer your question about what e-commerce is, e-commerce is literally just online selling. You're selling products online. It's the transaction of, it's the merchant transactions on the internet. And that could be anything. It could be selling a product uh, on, a, on a Shopify store. It can be using um, uh, YouTube and just posting a lot of videos and you generate money from that. That's all a form of e-commerce. Anytime you make money on the internet, it's e-commerce. And, um, but what my suggestion is, is to start either an online store or start an uh, education platform. I mean, it's basically like what you're kind of doing right now as well. But I can tell you from the people I've coached, I've had students that literally had no experience whatsoever, never even touched a computer, that have had success, that have made over 20, 30 grand a month um, in monthly recurring revenue. And um, they didn't have a skill set. Well, they, they had a skill set, but they didn't have knowledge of e-commerce. They didn't have a specific niche that they wanted to go into that they were passionate about. All of these different things are things that you can do without necessarily having to be passionate or understand it. You can learn the market. You learn what the people want, and then you find the product that you can sell them. And yeah, so many different ways to do it. Like I said, there's a thousand different ways to, to skin a cat, essentially. Um, but yeah, it's mainly um, finding the right market, finding the right product for that market, and advertising. Okay. Um, let's see here. So what? So if our audience would like to find out more, where would they go to? Like, let's say, talk to you or reach out to you, or do you have like something set up already? Yeah. So I was actually originally going to send you a link for um, the workshop that we were doing. It was supposed to be on the 28th, but we're actually moving the date. So I won't send that link, but what I would say is just have anyone follow me on uh, on my Instagram, which is Harold I. Walters. So I actually just send it to you right now in the chat. Um, and I, I think you should be able to actually post this on StreamYard, right? Like, so people can see it. Um, but yeah, I just put it inside of the chat as well. So. But it's Instagram.com slash Harold I. Walters. There it is. Yep. 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 I'm, yeah. I'm learning this as well as we go along. Um, <laughs> no, you're fine. Yeah. So yeah. You can follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm always posting content, not as much as I used to, but I'm always posting content on e-commerce. And if I'm doing like a workshop or something, that's where it's going to be posted. You can also find me on Facebook as well, Harold I. Walters, or you can find my personal profile at Harold Walters. All right. Um, one last question, Harold, before we get off um, from this interview. Um, you know, as you know, the title of this podcast is Heart Education. Um, and I looked, you looked up the root word of education, um, educo. So education literally means to draw from within yourself is yeah. the rough translation from Latin. Um, when you hear, you know, the heart education, what sort of image uh, comes up to you? Um, I would say mastery. I, I think like it's a desire to like master, um, which is where I think the school system fails is that we don't teach mastery. And so it's like a discipline thing of like, whatever I learn, I'm going to put um, effort into making this thing something that is um, uh, effortless. And I think a lot of times right now is we, we, learn, we, learn, a, we learn a lot of different things in school but we don't learn them to where I can effortlessly communicate it. I can effortlessly do it. I can effortlessly talk about it. And so I think, um, I think mastery is, is what pops in my head when you say like, you know, it's drawing from within. Um, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, Harold. And for everyone else, uh, if you'd like to reach out to Harold regarding how to start an e -com, um business and whatnot, you can reach him out at Harold I. Walters on Instagram also on facebook i believe yes. yeah harold isaac walters on facebook yep all facebook. right well thank you very much harold for coming online and just sharing your experience um we, we appreciate it so much no problem rock yeah, have a good thank one you, man. Mm -hmm. everybody take care everyone mm -hmm.